Mikey and Nikki 1976, directed by the great Elaine May. Small but powerful cast, Peter Falk, John Cassavetes, Carol Grace, Ned Beatty. Now, there are going to be spoilers in this video, just so you know. But this is a gangster film about two guys, the characters played by Cassavetes and Falk, who are doing things for the mafia, and Cassavetes steals from the mafia. Never a good idea. And they're on the run. To me, this movie is kind of about a couple of things. Firstly, it stuck out to me that this was about watching the end of a lifelong friendship. It's really sad, really destructive. You can tell that it was... Uh, a long time coming perhaps there's a lot of fights they get into arguments they bring up past experiences and you're seeing the final straw maybe this predict this final predicament was the last straw for them and the second thing it's about is this interesting back and forth between Falk and Cassavetes in like a chess match so Peter Falk is actually working for the mafia to lure him to a place to kill Cassavetes Cassavetes suspects it but doesn't say anything thinks he knows and so neither one of them really knows what the, what, what the other has in their hand, so to speak. And it's kind of interesting to watch this back and forth. Wait a second. This podcast is only how much to support each month on Patreon? What? Anyway, I watched this movie on Criterion Streaming. And one of the great things about Criterion, they're not a sponsor of this podcast, but I just like this aspect of it. You watch the movie and it also suggests other videos that they have where actors, directors, uh, artists, um, critics are talking about the film and why it's important to them or why they love it or they put it in the context of the time it was released. For this movie, Mikey and Nikki, Pat Oswald had some really interesting things. Listen to this clip. Every romanticized thing about mobsters and hitmen just gets pissed away in this film. What do you think they're planning? To shoot you in a movie house? It's one of the most real crime movies. And actually, it anticipates Goodfellas in that Godfather was creating this myth about the mafia. And Goodfellas like, no, it's actually just these grubby, low-life people. Look, I, I don't want to have a misunderstanding with you. Uh, I, I know I'm going to say oh. There are not elaborate heists. There are not clever repartee. It is absolute yeah. impulse. They do not know what they're going to do one second to the next. Yeah. And it's amazing. So with that in mind, it's really interesting that he says that because as I watched the movie, I did think of that Bruce Springsteen song, Atlantic City. Let me read you a few lyrics. Well, I got a job and I tried to put money away, but I got debts no honest man can pay. Now, I've been looking for a job, but it's hard to find. Down here, it's just winners and losers and don't get caught on the wrong side of that line. Well, I'm tired of running out on the losing end, so honey, last night I met this guy and I'm gonna do a little favor for him. So that reminded me of these two guys, sort of bumbling around, uh, you know, making decisions that are poor, probably their whole lives, dragging their wives into this mess the whole time. And, uh, you know, I think they go together and it kind of leads me to the next clip I wanna play you because I think one of the great things about great movies is that people can have completely different interpretations of what they are. And so um, this is a clip by Richard Brody and Carrie Rickey, um, and they're, they're film critics. And uh, I, I want you to listen to this real quick. I'm gonna tell the bus driver. No, I'm gonna tell your mother. <sighs> you know, I don't wanna start up with your element. My element? When I watch an Elaine May movie, I'm always looking at it through her eyes. I don't think these men are heroized. These are men who trash women because they want to feel stronger and they want to feel powerful. And so I don't think that not casting strong women in the movie makes it anti-feminist or something. I think it makes these men look small and petty and narcissistic. What are you talking about? I'm your friend when other people are around. No, you're not. You don't know who I am when other people are around. It's very much May's view of the harrowing complexity of apparently simple relationships. Elaine May filmed endemic male ugliness, endemic male violence, endemic male abusiveness, and what women endured at the hands, literally at the hands of men throughout her career. In the early 1970s, she was entirely lucid about what it was like to be a woman in a world of men. And May's films suggest the difficulty, the complexity, the emotional torment 
of abuse, of enduring abuse, and also peculiarly and painfully suggest the seductive power of abusers. She is trying to lift the curtain to expose men and the institutions they hide behind. So this is just something I want to point out here. If you think about these characters as being kind of lowlifes, criminals, um, and you compare it to, say, the person that Bruce Springsteen was talking about in the song Atlantic City, I'm not sure what, what institutions those guys are hiding behind. Do you know what I mean? And we're speaking a lot of generaliz generalizations here. I and mean, I'm not trying to attack Carrie Rickey. She is, she, she's onto something. I'm sure Elaine May did want to look at the relationship between men and women and sort of the flaws that men have. But when you say men are hiding behind institutions, what institutions is the guy in Atlantic City hiding behind? What institutions are, are Peter Falk and Cassavetes hiding behind? These are lowlifes. These, are, these guys are assholes. Um, so I just want to be careful there because I think we tend to speak, I do it too, we tend to speak in generalizations. So I think some men, some men hiding behind institutions is accurate and sometimes it's not accurate because I don't think there's very much power in people who you know, are subservient to mob bosses. I don't know what power is in that, like maybe some short-term power, but anyway, it is interesting, their interpretation, parts of it. And uh, I think the Softy brothers also have uh, an interesting take on this. Let me, let me play a clip of that. I feel like it's also kind of a brother's movie. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, you know what I mean? The oh. movie's a portrait of friendship yeah. and why you're friends with someone despite their flaws but it's a gangster film. I know, that's the best. It's a movie in that way. Yeah. Excuse me. No smoking in the bus. So many different things, and you learn about so much over that period of time that it doesn't even, you like, almost forget that. I think that's the reason we're such good in our heads. That's how we know they really happen. It feels like you're seeing a lifetime. Yeah. There's such history to everything that you're seeing. She's yeah. interested in complicated people, people who contradict themselves, people who you love despite being maybe difficult. She's a humanist. Radical humanist, yeah. I just don't want to do it anymore. What? Be a friend. Then I'll be your friend. Now you'll be my friend when you're not in trouble. Like I was saying, one of the great things about great movies, you have lots of different interpretations of what things are. Depends on where you are in your life, too. You see it differently. Maybe at a, you see it at one point in your life when you're younger. Maybe you take something completely different than when you're in your 50s. You were sitting in that bar for 45 minutes. You never once thought about calling your wife. Never once thought about calling Annie. <laughs> All of a sudden, you got to call Annie. I got a terrific suggestion for you, Nick. I suggest you find somebody you can trust. All right, that's it. Patreon.com slash Arthouse Radio to support the show for as little as $3 a month. If you've seen Mikey and Nikki, let me know what you thought. All right, until next time.